Welcome into Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Of prime interest tonight, plot foiled. David Wright faces a federal judge after being arrested in Boston on terror-related charges. Authorities say he and Osama Rahim, the 26-year-old terror suspect shot and killed in Boston yesterday, were planning to attack and behead a police officer. Miranda Kahn has the latest on this investigation from our Newsmax newsroom. Miranda? J.D. law enforcement officials say the men may have become radicalized by militant Islamic social media sites and that their plans included beheading a law enforcement officer posing a, quote, imminent threat when confronted yesterday. We knew the plot had to be stopped. They were planning to take action. Those chilling words from law enforcement officials after portions of the duo's plans were released earlier today, although details on the specifics of the plot have not been released. In 2013, Rahim worked for about a month as a security guard at the Islamic Society of Boston Cultural Center, but a spokesperson there said he did not have any other affiliation to that mosque. Trying to offset outrage in the Muslim community after contrary accounts of the shooting appeared from the man's family. The Boston Herald reports community leaders were shown video footage of yesterday's encounter, leading some Muslim clergy to dismiss the claims by his brother, a California mom, that Rahim was shot in the back. Some others called the video vague. Retired General and former NSA and CIA Director Michael Hayden was on this program last night saying these kind of lone wolf threats and attacks may be becoming the new normal. This is another example of the new normal, the, the self-radicalized individual, somewhat like we saw in, in Garland, Texas. So um, I'm afraid we're just going to have to get used to this a bit. General Hayden went on to say that ISIS having the social media reach that they do have, these lone wolf style attacks will be hard to prevent because there just aren't enough resources available to stop them. J.D. Thanks, Miranda. Let's bring in a couple of experts to talk further about this. We're joined now by Claire Lopez, an intelligence expert and vice president for research and analysis for the Center for Security Policy. She is Skyping in from Washington, D.C. and also from Newsmax, Washington, my old House colleague, the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Hoekstra. Thanks to you both for being here tonight on Newsmax Prime. Claire, let me begin with you. Is this the new normal? In some ways, yes, it is. Um, we're not talking about anything like self-radicalization. What we're talking about is the indoctrination of individuals um, throughout the, the world where instead of just having uh, identity, per persons identifiable directly with a terrorist organization like, let's say, Al-Qaeda or the Islamic State, what you've got now are encouragement from those organizations through online media and their magazines to conduct what is called in Islam uh, individual jihad, fard rain, it's called. And it means jihad in place, jihad where you live. And they are doing it um, under the tutelage and nourished and nurtured by Islamic mosques um, that they attend or are affiliated with to some degree or other. In this case, we're looking at the Islamic Center of Boston, uh, the Islamic Society of Boston, excuse me, and the Islamic Society of Boston Cultural Center. Both of these much in the news um, recently and for the last several years, uh, also connected, of course, to the Boston Marathon bombers, uh, Tamerlane and Jokart Tsarnaev. Let me turn now to Pete Hoekstra. Pete, let me ask you the same question. General Hayden put the idea forth last night. Claire apparently agrees that this is the new normal. Should it be? Do we have to settle for this? Well, I think right now we have to settle for it. And we just need to be prepared uh, to deal with it. And I agree with Claire 100 percent. The term self-radicalization is absolutely the wrong term to use. This is an indoctrination strategy, as Claire described it, by radical jihadist groups overseas. They are using the Internet. Uh, they are using social media to indoctrinate people to accept this philosophy, and then they get encouragement uh, and support from re a religious perspective from mosques in the United States and in Europe. This is a global effort to indoctrinate and to spread this kind of terror and fear around 
the world, especially into Europe and especially into the United States. It is not self-radicalization. It is indoctrination. It is a planned strategy to move their agenda forward, and we need to realize it. Uh, Pete, let me continue with you for a second and talk about what has been going on on Capitol Hill, especially in the wake of the fact that the FBI says some of the information they gathered about these two men in Boston and their plans came from a recorded conversation. Will the new rules of the USA Freedom Act, which replaces the Patriot Act, help or hinder law enforcement's uh, efforts in situations like we saw over the past couple of days in Boston? Uh, it's going to hinder it. At one point in time, we got all of this information in one place from, uh, as the Wall Street Journal reported, over 1,400 different telephone companies who measured and tracked what number, called what number for how long, so you could, if you found a bad number, we had this in the Intel Committee, we'd identify a bad person in Afghanistan, we'd pick up their pocket litter, we might get a phone number, we'd track that phone number, and then we'd find out that this phone number may be called into the United States. That would then trigger an effort to get a court order to track who that number called, and if we got more information, you go to the next step and you would try to get content. That is going to be a much slower process today, and we may not be able to get the same kind of sophisticated uh, coordinates, coordinates in terms of tracking this as what we have in the past. It hurts to lose this capability. Claire, let me ask you the same thing. Uh, does this USA Freedom Act, in fact, handcuff law enforcement and slow it down, as Pete is suggesting? It makes it more difficult. There's no question about that. Um, as as um, the Chairman Hoekstra said, instead of being able to go to one repository uh, of, of metadata, if you will, uh, now, uh, according to the new law, the intelligence community will have to go to individual telephone companies, uh, many of them, hundreds of them, all over the United States, and ask them to please share their information when direct information is obtained about a terrorist potential, well, connection to uh, an American. So it makes it more difficult in that the process is, is longer, um, it, is, it is more attenuated in that it, it is not just one central place to go to. Um, and indeed, there is some question about whether the telephone companies, which will now hold this data instead of NSA, um, can even be compelled to provide it um, upon request to the intelligence community. So. All in all, this is just one tool in the entire intelligence community toolkit, uh, if you will. Uh, but it does take it um, to, to a, a more difficult uh, way for them to, to, to carry it out. And, and so uh, in, in that sense, uh, it will harm uh, collection and uh, our ability, our ability to, to keep track of individual jihadis. Gotcha, Muslim, Claire. Uh, Appreciate that. Let me, Pete, let me close out with you. A minute remains. And what I'm curious about, both you and Claire have mentioned the interaction of mosques in certain areas. You have so-called community leaders stepping forward. Miranda reported in Boston there was, uh, there was an effort to claim the suspect was shot in the back. Are we to, uh, to expect almost pro forma disinformation from so-called Islamic leaders associated with these mosques and community centers? 20 seconds to answer that, Pete. Well, you can't say there's going to be a blanket indictment uh, or a blanket uh, effort to do that, uh, but history has shown that there are groups within the United States that will do exactly that. There will be disinformation trying to push the blame somewhere else, uh, claiming Islamophobic uh, behavior on certain individuals and those types of things. It is part of the overall strategy, disinformation here in the United States. We appreciate the very good information and the perspectives we gain from both of you, Claire Lopez and Pete Hoekstra. Our thanks to you both, and Newsmax Prime is coming back after this.